Where is this hanging fish? Where is the running man that is on fire? Where is the lady holding an egg, watching another egg walk away? So, what is this? Is it a painting or a picture puzzle? It's actually a painting with over one hundred Dutch proverbs. This means the herring hangs by its own gill, or you must accept responsibility for your own actions. This means to run like one's backside is on fire, or to be in great distress. This means to keep the hen's egg and let the goose's egg go, or to make a bad decision. Wow, pretty cool! So, who made this painting, and why? The painting is by Peter Bruegel, the Elder, a Dutch Renaissance painter. Bruegel specialized in moralizing subjects. Meaning, he drew and painted expressions of morals, right and wrong behavior. For example, look at this painting. Each blind man's expression looks different yet genuine and real. Also, each has a different blindness. Look at their head postures. They are looking up because they use their other senses like hearing and smell. See the church in the background. Part of Bruegel's message: Do not blindly follow leaders that lead you away from the church, or you will end up in trouble. Many of Bruegel's paintings focus on the lives of Dutch commoners. For a long time, people believed that great paintings need great subjects. Many of the images, till now, have been religious. Classical or of wealthy figures, but this painting is of ordinary people in an ordinary village. Why? It is because of the Reformation. What is the Reformation? In the early 1500s, the church had a big problem with corruption when they began selling indulgences. What is an indulgence? Indulgence is a way of reducing the punishment for a sin. However, given the unlimited supply of indulgences, with exaggerated promises of salvation, the practice was abused by the greedy. The Reformation was a religious protest of indulgences and the church, started by Martin Luther, a German theologian, monk, and priest. He wrote the Ninety-Five Theses with two central tenets. One, that the Bible is the central religious authority, and two, that humans may reach salvation only by their faith and not by their deeds. The Reformation also affected art. Instead of huge works of art for churches, smaller paintings were made for rich merchants to buy and display in their homes. And many Northern Renaissance artists began painting secular subjects like history, landscape, portraits, and still life. Wait, what? There's another Renaissance? There was a South Renaissance and a North Renaissance. Yep. The Northern Renaissance was the Renaissance that occurred in the northern part of Europe, or north of the Alps. Starting in the late 15th century, its ideas influenced artists in France, the Netherlands, Germany, and Flanders, or northern Belgium. This new style of art differed from the Italian Renaissance artists who were inspired by ancient Greek and Roman art. The Northern Renaissance artists were inspired by the world around them. Look at this living room. Nothing really special about it. Looks like a common living room from that time period. Peter Bruegel, the elder, painted the world around him. This is called the Hunters in the Snow. 
The painting shows a winter scene with three hunters returning with their dogs, people ice skating in the distance, crows scattered around the village, and a group of people preparing food outside. Look at all the details painted here. Look how far away some of the buildings are. Hold on. Wait. This painting doesn't seem to have linear perspective. Can't see a vanishing point. You see, Italian Renaissance artists had a good sense for mathematics. They tried to keep things symmetrical and balanced. On the other hand, Northern Renaissance artists paid close attention to surface details. So when they look at these mountains, the far mountain does not look very clear. There's a mist or a fog, and we can feel its distance from us. This technique was called atmospheric perspective and was common in Northern Renaissance, and was made possibly by using oil paint. Wait. Did you say oil paint, like the oil paint we use today? Yes, Northern Renaissance artist Jan van Eyck advanced many influential changes. One of which was the perfection of oil painting. Oil is slow drying. This makes it easy to change and add details while it dries. It makes. Creating realistic pictures more straightforward than using the tempera paints and frescoes that artists had been using before. It also gave artists the means to create translucent effects because oil could be applied lightly like a glaze. Great for creating atmospheric perspective. Whoa, that's so cool! Here's a self-portrait. Check out those details. Looks like a photograph, right? What is this? Is this a sign or something? Ooh, a mirror and a reflection. This is another of Jan van Eyck's famous paintings. Wow, what incredible attention to detail! He made the inside of homes and the texture and shape of everyday objects. Appear as real as possible. This style is called naturalism. Another important trademark of Northern Renaissance was printmaking. What is printmaking? In 1440, German goldsmith and inventor Johannes Gutenberg introduced the metal movable type printing press. This meant books could be made with higher quality and sold cheaply. This invention had great influence over Northern Renaissance art. Albrecht Durer, a German painter and mathematician, made his greatest artistic impact as a printmaker. See this rhino? Does it look like a real rhino? What do you think? Durer never actually saw a rhinoceros in real life. Then how did he make this print? He received a letter from his friend about the rhino and began a pen sketch, which later became a woodcut. Although he never saw it with his own eyes, he created a cool-looking rhino. This image became very popular and was believed as accurate for many years. He was both very creative and clever. Reminds me of another Renaissance artist, Leonardo da Vinci. In fact, Dura traveled to Italy twice. He learned from great Italian artists and appreciated the prestige given to artists. And though he had no formal classical education, he communicated with and learned from scholars, and even wrote books on geometry and mathematics. This painting is a self-portrait. Wow! Look at those details. Face, hair, and fur. He painted himself in a frontal pose that is strikingly similar to how Christ was represented. He signed it with a monogram of his initials. During this period, many artists signed their names. Perhaps it was because of the prestige. 
This watercolor of a hair is extremely detailed and looks almost like a scientific illustration or photograph. He was one of the first artists to produce pure landscape paintings. It is so impressive to learn about Northern Renaissance art and the accurate depiction of details, aka naturalism. It's a mirror reflecting their religion, social position, and their daily life. And though they were affected by the Italian Renaissance, they developed their own rich culture by developing new techniques. New materials and diversity of subjects with new ideology, like the Reformation. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.